Man, oh man, I think we need to start moving these things outside because it's the first Tuesday of summer and we're already feeling that summer weather. And in the studio, though, I've got a band that's been, I've been trying to get on for quite some time. Oh, by the way, I'm Frank Williams Jr. and this is the Homegrown Happy Hour and my guest today is Taylor Tucky. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm assuming y'all are from Taylor. Uh, no. No, you're not. <laughs> in, in, in spirit, we are, Frank. A little, well, Taylor spirit. Okay, well, that's what they call Taylor, a lot of them, Taylor Tucky, yeah. which I thought, you know, I would never say it, but if you're from there, you could probably say it, but hey, you guys they, aren't they, from there. Yeah, they absorb it, man. They, 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 they embrace it these days. Where are you guys from? The Clawson Royal Oak area. Okay. Okay, so how long have you guys been a band? Like, this is a pretty, not often we get the full We've, band experience. Uh, Taylor Tucky started in 2012. We kind of just... Had a little thing going on, you know. Felt the new country coming on. Wanted to do something with it, um, and uh, but uh, we have really kind of spun our wheels until we got Perry in the band, Perry Joe here, uh, and it's really taken us to the next level. Um, you know, we had some really good guys before Perry. You know, some really good singers and all that. But uh, uh, I think Perry gave us a little came in and gave us some inspiration to take it to the next level and record our first album. How long? So you, I would say you, you've been here since the start. Yep. How about? Is this band original members besides Perry? Or? Uh, Mark and Linnell and I have been together for uh, the better part of 15 years in various organizations. Let's get through um, this really quick. So we got Perry Joe, yep. the lead singer. Been here you're a Chris year. Whiskey, yep. and you're playing acoustic. Yep. Mark Davis on the lead guitar. Linnell Lewis on the drums. And Kaylin Amen. Yes. Amen. Um, that is the I mean, first time I've mean. ever said the names of the other like the other musicians on the Homegrown Happy Hour, except for the main person, because I always screw it up. So the fact that I just went through that list and got everybody, even if your last name was kind of butchered, yeah, yeah, no, I got no. your first name right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually got it right. You know, he's the new guy anyway. He deserves all the razzing. <laughs> but by the way, by the way, he doesn't. He seems a lot younger than all y'all. How did you? Uh, not by much. Just by a couple of years. Okay. <laughs> Are you allowed to drink? <laughs> uh, in Canada, no. <laughs> yes. So how does how does getting all right? So Perry, he, he was the inspiration to go kind of country. What were you before? Uh, no, Taylor Tucker's always been country, um, you know, with the new country or whatever. But um, you know, we, we kind of needed uh, 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 somebody to, to kind of come along with some better creative ideas. Sure. You know, um, Perry's voice is incredible. It's it's got a lot of range. So the you know the the additional melodic. You know, uh, you know, features that he brought to the band really kind of help us inspire this, the songs that we're, that we're playing. And now we're moving towards the original music side right. of sure. country and yeah. trying to go forward with that. Well, that's what I invited you on the show to hear. I want to hear some original music. So right. let's get right to it right now. This first song is called I Bleed Country. And, and uh, Perry, I'm assuming you're the mastermind behind the song. Did you write it? or? Interestingly enough, it was a collaboration with Greg Stryker. You know Greg Mr. Stryker? Mr. Stryker. Yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, every time Stryker recommends an artist, he never shows up with them, even though he said he's going to be Right. Where you at, buddy? He did mention us last time on your show. No, well, you know, I think, I think what happened, Frank, is his truck that has 270,000 miles on it finally <laughs> broke down. Now, that's country. Now, he's actually a very big advocate for you guys. He's hit me up a few times before. I believe, Chris, you even did. Yes. And, that yeah, Greg is really behind you guys. So yeah. be thankful for his support. And, Greg, we sorry we missed you. But well, I know we're behind watching, you, so. too, because his writing is incredible. And we support him, you know, with our, our performance. He is really good. And it's cool, though, because, like, this, again, <laughs> this isn't about him, obviously. But it's just it's funny that all you guys deal with Greg in some way or another. And yeah. it, it, just, like, just to help out or with songwriting. He talked to someone like my father, who's, I'm not going to lie, not really that. <laughs> but right. he knows who Greg is. He's heard of the Greg Stryker band, like back in the day. Yeah. So Greg's been around a long time. But I want to hear your music, even yeah. if Greg did help write it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we worked on it too. This is called "I Bleed Country," and we're with Taylor Tucky live at Music Town, Detroit. I bleed country, John Deere green, dusty boots, and old blue jeans. By the time I'm done, you'll know what I mean. Let me tell you, I bleed country. My family worked these fields since the dawn of time. My parents raised us on nickels and. You say there's backwoods in my family tree. Don't care what you got to say about.
my truck outside It might be covered in rust But it's still alive My grandpa left it to me in 95 And it still drives Won't let it die Cause I bleed country John Woods. I might be misunderstood. But when Uncle Sam called me up to fight for this country, I said that I would. I bled country red, white, and blue. Laid my marching song. I really like that a lot. Now, it's kind of a tribute for the veterans too, by the way. Speaking of which, do you, I, I never asked this question and I, I, I thought it maybe be a good one for you guys, especially while you're playing that song. Do you guys do anything like with, for the vets, like any organizations for the vets or anything like that? Absolutely we do. Oh, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them and these are my favorites and I'm wearing the shirt. Oh, down, DMV. Down River for Veterans out okay. of Wyandotte. Okay. And Ann Rudisill, who is one of the founders, is also a shirt tail relation to us. So we call her Aunt Ann. So we support them. And then, so shout out to all the Down River for Veterans peeps. Yeah, shout out. That's, that's really cool. And, and another then one. my wife and I are members of the Eagles Club, and the band helps support them. We're going to be doing our second fundraiser for them this year, August 17th. And the Eagles support the veterans, the... Wounded Warrior Fund, they do a fundraiser every year, and they're just a good community organization. That's really cool. Do you guys perform in a band at any of their functions or like any of their events or something like that? When's well, the next one of those? Um, August 17th that one. Is, is the big fundraiser for the Eagles, and we're going to have a fundraiser for the Down River for Veterans. It's just the first one fell through because of weather, so we're waiting for Ann to reschedule it. So as soon as they do, we'll be doing that something. That has got to be one of the toughest things. I know, especially around this time of year with all the festivals going on, it's hit or miss with the rain. Yeah. And if it rains, it doesn't matter how much money you put into the festival or how much money you put into the event, you kind of lost it. At that I got point. one more Veterans Connection, and you may not even know this. I sit on the board of a Veterans Resource Networking Group, uh, which uh, my own company, I own a medical equipment company, we donate uh, gear to veterans who can't afford things. We build r ramps for them for access for their homes. Oh, that's really um, cool. Yeah. So you guys are very involved behind the scenes Absolutely. of anything to do with vets. That's really, really yeah. cool. I did not know that. I'm glad you guys brought that up. That's sweet. But right, so before we play that first song, though, you, Chris, you and Mark have been doing this for a minute. Right. You kind of acquired other talents around you. But you say Perry is kind of the one that started with the whole country scorched earth campaign kind of thing. How did you find him? How did you find Lanell? How did you find... 
Well, Kalen. Um, Mark and Linnell and I have been working together for 15 years, you know, like I mentioned, uh, and uh, we also have another pop band that's something else or whatever for money. And uh, <laughs> uh, Perry, <laughs> well, you got to make some money, right? Yeah, I mean, Perry, at least you're honest. A long time friend of mine has been in many popular bands around town, including uh, Category 5. Um, and we uh, had, for a minute, we had a, 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 a classic rock thing that we were getting going and That'd be uh, cool. and then uh, eventually he kind of fell into this um uh, a singer uh, buddy of ours that was uh, up in bay city decided to go his own direction and in this right time right place just kind of everything uh you know that worked out for him to come in and just kind of have at it i called him and said i was ready to work and he said i got a spot for you what do you think about singing country <laughs> <laughs> i said i love country <laughs> i'm in awesome and then kaylin he just kind of just he had, to, he had to try out and work his butt off to join the band. Everyone yes. else kind of had connections and got in. He had to work really hard. Kalen's, well, you know, you know, there's always a revolving door of bass players going on in bands, right? Fair and enough. Kind of <laughs> you know, Kalen's, uh, he's, he's doing a good job, though. He came in and really uh, embraced what we were doing. Thank you very much for that, by the way. You guys sound really tight all together. It's hard to imagine that you guys haven't been jamming really all that long, like for as long as the duration of the band's been around, because you guys all sound really good together. Oh, thank you. That's really thank cool. You. And no, you have. No, that's actually an interesting question. I'm, I'm asking this question on the fly because you said you did uh, like a, a poppy kind of thing, and you used to do a classic rock kind of thing. But with you doing that, those two, and then the country, do you ever like do a show and screw up your songs? Did you have <laughs> so many in the repertoire? You know, like uh, between the four of us, because they're all four in the other band too. There, you know, our repertoire dips into the 300 or 400 song range. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a few screw ups. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, so it's how you recover. Well, and some <laughs> of them cross over between the two bands, you know. But uh, for the most part. You know, what we're trying to do with Taylor Tucky is, you know, is take it away from the, the cover band thing and, and move it into an original project. And what we actually, I know you guys have this new album that's about to be released at the end of July, I'm, I'm right? Yep, now, right. all the songs that you're playing today on this album? Yes. Okay. We'll save the best for last. We'll save, the, we'll save that title track for last. But I want to hear one more right now. And then we'll get into more questions. I got a lot to get to with you guys. And you might not like some of it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Especially at the end. So I don't know. I'm going to let you all you know. Before we started the interview, I was talking about this thing called the Throw You Under the Bus Awards. And for the viewers that are watching, you may remember this. I maybe did it about maybe six months ago. Alan Turner Band was the last one to endure this. Ah. Now, usually I asked Alan, and it was basically like I asked Alan, you know, just to throw his members under the bus. Like, who's the whatever, you know, like the biggest <laughs> foot, the biggest mama's boy. So I'm actually, at the end of this interview, I'm going to throw it around to each and every one of you. And every one of you is going to answer truthfully, about another member in your band. <laughs> so you guys all have something to talk right. about at the end. Oh, and I good. wanted to throw that as a heads up so you all are prepared at the end. I'm going to point at you. After and I, I was writing, you might have saw me writing down. <laughs> I had five questions already written, and then I put the names in front of what question, who's getting what. I saw so, Alan's so. spot here. He's a he's a friend of ours, actually. We just did a show with him up in Harbor okay, Beach. Okay, he's a great dude. Big structure. He's a great guy. Absolutely. He's, he's always a, great a good guy. performer, in fact, too. Uh, he's, I, we left a microphone at that show, and he's uh, delivering it to me in person today. Is, is that not a great guy? I don't know what is. He might have so. broke it. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, dude, if I just show my face with it and it's broken, he might be a little bit more forgiving. <laughs> All right, so this next song we got is called Old Barstool. Is there, is there a story behind this song, or is it... It is. Went on so smoothly. It's another lightning striker. It's yeah. a collaboration with Greg Stryker. That's the way to put it, a lightning striker. Yeah. If it's a song written by Greg, it's a lightning striker. We got a trademark yeah. on that striker. We got a trademark on that. <laughs> if you're lying, you better hurry. <laughs> we actually have four songs collaborated with him on this album, and this is another one of them, Old Bar Stool. All right, let's check this out. save a seat they know i like jack daniels two fingers neat the auto man at eight there ain't no tv just an old dive bar that closes down at three and i feel right at home on this vine
the jukebox is broke. The cigarette machine still has Marlboro Reds from 1963. The bartender flirts with every girl he sees. They always say that guy is a creep. Girls can be so cruel, like back in high school. I keep myself out of the drama. jam session you have no headphones you're all amped up and it's just like you're sitting in the basement of just like hanging out at band practice i love this this is, but this is better than practice because actually this is like already been practice right <laughs> right, right how all right, i gotta i gotta be honest i wonder how nervous some of these artists get before doing the show <coughs> excuse me because i'll be honest i sometimes i get nervous did you were you guys like had to talk yourselves into doing this or were you just kind of like let's rock and roll I have been Kick watching this your show ass. for a year now since I got into oh, the country music. No, right. And I have been dying to get on this show. I've been waiting for it to work out, so I'm so glad well, to be I'm here. Well, I'm glad you're here. That's nice to hear, too, man. Thanks for watching. That's really cool. <laughs> Where have you guys, all y'all, all y'all you guys been watching the show or just him? Come on now. Yeah, Let's be... <laughs> now. I've been taking clips of your show and showing it to them at rehearsal. <laughs> like, this is where we're going. This is what I, I just, I, I said something, we're doing this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kaylin, take off school. <laughs> but it's more like this is what's going on in the greater Detroit country music scene. And if we want to be a part of that for the original music, this is the place to be to find out what's going on. Well, that's kind of the thing how I started this, because when I started... I'll be honest, I, I didn't know much about the country music scene, but I realized there's a lot of diamonds in the rough, especially in this city, and a lot of the big-name artists, they come to Detroit because they know that this is actually a hotbed for country, and they make it a point to come here at, like, big days, or, you know, for big events. Oh, yeah. Got Garth yeah. Brooks you know, the other day at the hoedown. Like, he showed up as, like, a, a service because he owes Detroit and the hoedown to start his career. Yeah, right? I didn't know that until he comes on stage and says that, but, you know, that was pretty cool. Which, by the way, if you're watching, that was a secret to even me. I had no idea until, like, I'm standing in line for something. I thought I was going on stage to do something, and next thing you know, I'm led into a room for meet and greet with Garth Brooks. I'm like, wow, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty awesome. But the thing that you, the big reason you guys wanted to come is to, to promote the new album, which is coming out at the end of July. What's it called? Where There's Smoke. Where There's Smoke. You having like any kind of big party to bring this into the world, a release party or something like we that? We are indeed on August second. It's a Friday. We're gonna be down at the Token Lounge. Yeah, you guys all remember the Token Man all the way back in the eighties, back you know, uh, back when the 
walk in and PA would blow your face off, you know. Me and, and Kalen and, probably don't remember the 80s right. all too much. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what my big brother told me anyway. So, <laughs> But, yeah, we're going to be down at the Token. Uh, hopefully Greg's going to be with us. Uh, we got a couple other special guest artists that we can't really reveal right now. That's cool, though. That's always in. exciting. Yeah. That's always exciting. Yeah, yeah. Because you, 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 it's hard not to reveal things. So it to is. make it a secret, you have to make it. It good. is. It's, well, it's, it's in the works, and I don't want to you know, promise well, it and not deliver either. I, so. will, <laughs> I won't pry anymore. You just have to be at their Token Lounge Friday night. It's August 2nd. Yeah, you can get tickets online, actually, uh, from the Token website. You know, uh, So buy your tickets now, because it's going to be standing room only down gonna there. That's going to be sweet. That should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Maybe I'll try to get off work that night. And, right we'll do that. and the Token Lounge is just now starting to turn country itself, because it realizes country music I've heard yeah. that. I heard that. More, more than some now. of the artists that come on the show end up doing a show there yeah. at some point. I'm like, that's a cool place to, you know. Yep. He's been bringing in all the legacy rock bands from the '80s, and you know, you know, like Dawkins guitar player, and you know, this and that, or whatever. And now cool. he's now he's he's realizing that there's a lot of country that he can bring in, and, and absolutely, you know, it's a, if it's a done big market, right, you know. Yeah, if done right. Well, the, the next song is the title track off the new album, "Where There's Smoke." Yep. And why? How did you come to that name for the name of the, the album and name of this? Why that? Well, the hook in the chorus says, "Every smoke detector in the house is beeping loud." And the premise of the song is a young couple who's so in love and their passion is so hot that they actually set the house on fire. <laughs> and so okay. that is the concept of the song. And we thought, wouldn't that be a good name for a title track and make for some great graphics for an album cover and all that? And it's just taken a life of its own but since then. we got to figure out a way to get that graphic on the, on the Facebook, too, because you showed me before we started the segment. It is actually really sweet. It's probably one of the better photo cool like the cool album colors that i've seen in a while at any on any level it's just the photoshop of it like how they have the whole yeah i can't I'll even explain it i'll see i don't want i don't want to steal that thunder it's hard to explain it, so i'll have to get that really to you good. well before we get to this last song though where's your music online like where can we find it just type in taylor tucky spotify yes. Yeah, we got some on our Facebook page, especially. Uh, we've got some, uh, you know, live video out there that we've been, that we've had for a while. Uh, some of the new songs we're just starting to put out there now um, because we only we really got these together in the last, you know, sixty days. Um, and uh, you know, we that's it. Our website, yeah. These wow. Most of the stuff came together that's in the last really sixty cool. days. The album is being mastered as we speak yeah. in the next couple of days, that's so it's really not even really done yet. And it's a full album. There's ten songs on it. You know, so and it's uh, out of the songs that you played today. How many of these are first time? To a live performance. Oh no, we've been playing them. Okay, we've been playing them. Uh, you know, we give we did a preview party here and there, and we've been playing them at our shows and whatever. Try to get a vibe of how the people yeah, feel about exactly. it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's so. cool. Well, let's check this out. This is your last song. Where there's smoke. This is Taylor Tucky live at Music Town Detroit for the Homegrown Happy Hour. <laughs> Three alarm will light here in this house tonight. Crank out the seeger and get our night moves on. Put on that little black dress, the one I like the best. It always hits the floor before we reach the door. Every smoke detector in the house is beeping loud. I just need to find you in this big cloud. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Oh, oh, somebody call 911. It's hotter than the sun. Baby, don't you know you're my smoking gun? Don't need no hook and ladder. You are all that matters. Let me tell you this, I'm far from done. Every smoke detector in the house is There's smoke, there's fire Found the flame, girl Just say my name This fire's nowhere near contained Burning bright All through the night You know we're never gonna be the same
your smoke detector and the house is beeping loud. I'm so glad I found you in this big house. Girl, you get me higher than a jet fighter. Grandpa always used to tell me where the smoke that's fire. Every smoke detector in the house is beeping loud. I'm so glad I found you in this big house. Girl, you get me higher. Where there's smoke, there's fire. cool the end of that song is designed for the whole crowd to sing along yeah right summertime sing along that That was a cool jam we might even get him singing that song it'll be like the last song of the night lay our guitars down walk off stage and if they keep doing it we'll come back on and do another song (laughs) that's the encore yeah but they gotta keep doing it even if they don't do it i would still go out and do an encore (laughs) and just sing the song again just go oh (laughs) sing it with me All right, it's time for that time of the show that, Perry, I was going to give you all these questions just directly to you, but we'll start with you, and then I'll move down the line. Perry, out of your bandmates, everyone that you're here with today, which, by the way, is there anyone missing on this group? No. Everyone uh, everyone that plays live with you is here right now? Yes. Yes. All right, Perry, out of your bandmates, who's the biggest mama's boy? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. And you can nominate yourself. It's okay. I was just going to tell you, it's me. Is it? <laughs> All right. Mom, I had a feeling you were going to. come gonna... to more shows. <laughs> why, why, why isn't she here? Mom! Yeah. His mom is awesome. I got Perry in an uncomfortable spot. He needs his mom. <laughs> his mom is awesome. He'll, she came up to me one night and she goes, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I'm like, yeah, I was up there. <laughs> that was me. That's my boy. That's my boy. That's like my mom. The first time I was ever on the air, she goes, yeah, I heard someone talking, but I didn't hear you. <laughs> Who do you think that was? Like, oh, that was you? Like, yeah. And her favorite song that we do is My Maria, and so I always dedicate it to her at the shows. So That's cool. I'm definitely a mom. That's boy. really cool. <laughs> God love a boy who's close to his mama. <laughs> All right, Chris, you're up next. All right. Five away. your bandmates, and like I said, you can nominate yourself. Okay. Who would you say is the best looking? Oh, well, of course we've got <laughs> Mr. GQ he knew over that was, here. Like, you better right. say that, was a, that was a that was a nerf <laughs> toss, you know, right? Mr. GQ over here. He is the youngest member of the band, obviously, by just a little bit. But uh, you know. All right, Kalen, you're next. He's the one that still, <laughs> he's the one that still has all his hair, so he's he's We're just it. passing the ball around. So Kalen, you get the next one. Who's the uh, who's the biggest flirt? Biggest flirt. Is that gonna be you too? Uh, no, probably not. I'd, actually, I'd have to say Chris. I feel like he's always on these gigs, super thirsty. Maybe he just talks big game, but I don't know. He seems, you know, he talks a lot of shit. So yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad I, I asked I work him that it, question. I work it when I can. You know? And this is why I said it's gonna be a very interesting conversation on the way home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Mark, your turn. Mark, who would you say is the messiest? Who's the dirtiest out of your bandmates? Oh, he looks at that. You know what? <laughs> who's like, who's the slob? Y'all are slobs? You know what? None of us are slobs. Yeah, we're really... actually, when we break down our gear we set up, we're organized, we're totally in control. None of us are. What their homes look like, I don't know. <laughs> but on stage, professionally, no one. And that's actually the truth. That's really cool. Yeah, okay. Applaud for you guys for being the cleanest <laughs> country band you know, in Metro Detroit. The, the back of my Suburban says otherwise after a gig. Mark rolled, rolled by himself to the <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, when, I, when I clean up the back of my Suburban after a gig, there's various uh, chunks of food, wrappers, and uh, you know, uh, drinkables back there uh, that uh, weren't there when we started the gig. That's all I know. <laughs> and Linnell's back there because he's like, Oh, he's gonna ask me last, and I hate these questions already. Yeah, I'm thinking like, you know, we're probably not gonna be a band after the day. I need to find a new gig. That's what happens when you come on the homegrown happy hour. Only the strong survive. <laughs> Bring it. All right, who would you say is the biggest diva? <laughs> biggest diva. Yeah. I heard it with. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Chris is the biggest. Chris. 
He didn't see that coming. We got, we got this guy. You got this guy, and you chose me. He's starting to sweat. He's like, oh, he's gonna say me. Oh, he didn't well, say me. Oh my god. Well, I thought he was gonna I, say I was me. Gonna say myself sometimes too, but you know. I've got to be honest. Chris. With everyone answering, I already had it in my head who I thought they were gonna say. That was the first one I got wrong. I thought you were gonna say Perry too. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, he's a, he's a lead singer, so he's automatically a diva. Right. So, yeah, okay, you okay, yeah, now it, it it comes with the territory. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys being good sports with that. That was fun. Awesome. <laughs> Taylor Tuggy, we'll see you guys soon. I hope you'll be yes. on the show again. Absolutely, Jeff absolutely, man. All right, you guys are still gonna be a band on the way home, right? You're absolutely. not gonna break up with those stupid <laughs> questions. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we're live every Tuesday for the Homegrown Happy Hour. If you're local, I want to hear from you. Do what they did. Just send it to me at my email, FrankJuniorRadio at gmail.com. We're here every Tuesday, live at noon. I'm Frank Williams Jr., and we'll see you next week.